So welcome back. This week is quite different for us because instead of sharing a camper van vlog, we're sharing a motorhome vlog. And what happened was Luke from Newmark Motorhome Hire got in touch with us and asked if we wanted to trial one for the weekend. And my fiance has been sending me a lot of eBay listings recently with caravan attachments that go onto a van. And I just couldn't say no because we'd be able to see what it was like and maybe make a decision later. Although this was a very scary experience for me because I've not driven many big vehicles so as usual, I'll leave a link below if you want to check them out. But because of based in Cambridge, we made an arrangement to leave our camper van locked up on their premises and then head to Lincolnshire to do some camping. Now, purely down to bad luck, unfortunately their smallest motorhome wasn't available. So we ended up trialling a six berth one. So it's one extreme to another because there's only two of us and a dog. Oh, and this one is an Auto Roller 707, which is a Fiat Ducato. But as usual, I'm in the passenger seat because I don't always like to dive straight into things. He definitely didn't know what was going on. But little does he know, he's about to go and see his grandparents. But the first stop is McDonald's in Peterborough. Right, I'm off to spend a penny. <gasps> hey, this is luxury, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> well, that was a very luxurious um, experience. <laughs> I've really got to get used to all these camera angles without a tripod. Stay put. You are perched on top of a headrest at the moment. Oh, this is exciting. I'm having the poshest McDonald's meal ever. Well, the poshest surroundings. Hello. Hello. It's high up this table. I can't be bothered to lower it or anything. Now I'm leaving it. It's just a McDonald's. Did you know every time you buy a McDonald's, keep the receipt, fill in the questionnaire on the service, you are then entitled to get a code to get a 199 burger, Big Mac and fries. And it's a vicious cycle because every time you get a receipt, even for a free coffee, you get another one of those and everybody gets highly satisfied anyway because it's quicker. But yeah, it's too cheap and my handbag is full of those receipts. Especially when you're out and about and it's 199. Are you cozy in your bed? You've left most of your dindins, what's going on? I'm gonna get it! 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 It's the only thing that gets him sometimes. I think he'll be fine soon when he sees his uh, grandparents. So it's the morning after our first night in the motorhome. We keep calling it a van, but it's really comfortable. The bed. I haven't woken up with back pain at all. That was my sort of worry because I do uh, get lower back pain sometimes depending on the mattress. But it was um, so peaceful. We brought our own pillows and uh, sleeping bag and that could have been a factor to it. But yeah, I feel really happy about the night's sleep. Apart from it could have been longer because we didn't go to bed till one in the morning because we were just busy yapping away with our in-laws so much to catch up on so uh, yeah enjoying a coffee um, I think we're gonna go to Skipness for a massive breakfast hopefully but we're gonna find one that's dog friendly and park this somewhere so welcome to Skegness. I've spent many a holiday here because there's a Butlins nearby and it's right on the coast but whenever we're here we usually meet up and go to the lakeside cafe it's decent food the coffee's not so great because it's instant but it's now also dog friendly. So that's a winner in my books. But this is where it started to get tricky, not because we had a motorhome, but because we wanted to go to the Sutton on Sea Caravan Club site because I had a voucher for the motorhome and caravan club. It was closed. So we ended up at this one at 
Anderby Creek, which actually was pretty decent. It was seven pound a night, no electric. We didn't need it because this motorhome was fully equipped and there was a generator in the back if we wanted to use it. And it was unbelievably peaceful and just two of us. So funnily enough, we didn't really do huge walks around the beach this time. I think that's because we wanted to make the most out of this motorhome while we had it. But the beach is very close, so we did have a quick walk. But this totally made my afternoon. Carry on camping in a motorhome. And what I absolutely loved about this was I could be lounging, watching TV while my fiance was doing something else. Or the next minute I'm in the kitchen pottering around. I'm making something and I've got loads of headroom as well. So the motorhome also came with a trio hob. Although when we're in the camper van, we only really need two. And there were loads of drawer space. These were very impressive soft closing ones. And it was just so easy just to get up, pop the kettle on and make a cup of tea. So I think it's time for a tour. So something we didn't need, but we used to store our bags, were these bunk beds. One had a shelf at the top, the bottom one had a little window. And those are at the back of the motorhome. You can see a smaller door leading to it and store stuff underneath the bed. And there's another door on the opposite side. I was also surprised that it was fully equipped as well when you hire from them. They also have blinds and fly screens as well, which I have to say, couldn't believe the difference. And hot water on tap, pun intended. Another thing that we appreciated for privacy is the sun reflectors in the window. So once I'd washed the pots, I could put them straight in the cupboard directly above and the oven is directly underneath the hob. I love those fancy handles by the way. And even more storage in the door, which looked like the perfect spice rack to me. The size of this fridge, and this is only two thirds of it, and there's a freezer compartment at the top. So if you're gonna be traveling for a week or two, this is definitely handy to stock up on supplies. So almost every part of the roof along the sofa and the kitchen area were all utilized with cupboards. And there's also a bike rack on the rear, but we don't have any bikes, but that is an option. Just above that is a reversing camera. This little door is access to the toilet cassette, which obviously you must empty that yourself, and that's where you fill it up with water. And above the windscreen was more of a storage area. So let's go in and I'll show you. So we're looking at the front cab and you can see a sort of shelf and a sunroof and you can see some spotlights and that is the bed. But before I show you that, this is what you can do with a bit of technology in the motorhome. Oh, have you rolled me up to TV? What time do you want to have tea then? It's half five now. Couple of hours? Sanitary facts. They put these in my room every day. They know I'm a man. <laughs> Originals in. Most of the lights were actually underneath the cupboards. Now for the bathroom, which is pure glamping, particularly if you're used to just camping in a tent or a camper van like ours with just a port -a, a nice big corner mirror, and the shower was the tap, which you can pull out and then just hook on to the right of me. And what we need to do before using it, unclip these straps that kept the shower screen to one side and remove this piece of wooden flooring and turn it on from the sink tap. But at night time, it had really cool LED lights. And Luke kindly lent us his so gimbal that he used for his smartphone. And I've never used one before. They're not very cheap, but it's meant to make camera work really steady. So oh, let's test it out. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense that's done. This works. Works. Right, 12 minutes. So it's time for some levitating bed action. This blew my socks off. And all you have to do is press the button or pull down, providing you've removed some of the sofa cushions. But when it got to getting on top of the bed, there are some ladders in the back and I probably could have done with them. I'm five foot four, but I just couldn't be bothered and I just reached up. And we could even angle the TV so we could watch it in bed as well. It's breakfast time soon. Hello. Shall we join you over here for the morning? Hello. So it's now our last morning, and for breakfast was oven baked sausages and pan fried bacon 
in wholemeal bread. Could totally get used to living like this. But before the end of any camping holiday, we needed to empty the toilet. So if you've never seen this experience, here goes. This one is a cassette on wheels, which I prefer compared to ours, because ours is quite heavy. And there's usually a place on a campsite we can get rid of it. And the drain for this one has a handle. So I'm just lifting it up. Yep, that's where your number twos go. I'm twisting the spout, unscrewing the cap. <laughs> Very nice. And away it goes. Because there's blue liquid poured in there, most of the stuff is usually disintegrated. And they just wash everything away with a hose. And now filling up the water. So we're leaving it in the exact same condition as how we got it. I think this took about 100 litres, so I was there quite a bit. And finally, I dip my toes in the water and I'm driving a motorhome for the very first time. It didn't feel as bad as I thought it would be. Of course I'd say that though, these are quite straight roads. I've had no experience reversing it and it's quite tall, you've got to be aware of trees and things around. But because I was driving so carefully, I was more concerned about a queue that I'd built up. So I gave it around 10 miles I think until I pulled over and, and swapped over. But I think I could do this again. And we just fell in love with the whole luxury living. 